Two major murder trials out of Conway conclude with the decision of life or death from jurors today. Plus, a car chase ends with two people behind bars tonight. Then, Ori County leaders trying to change where developers can build what this means for you. WMBF News at 11 starts right now. Live, local, late breaking. This is WMBF News at 11. We have an officer down at this time. Find that suspect still firing, use precaution. This is the, the most tragic event in the 35 years that I've been with Florence Police Department. A fluent neighborhood in the PD, usually quiet and business as usual, had its peace shattered in the hail of bullets one year ago today. Seven officers and deputies were serving a search warrant involving a man accused of sexually assaulting minors in the home. His father allegedly opened fire from a second story window. Florence Police Sergeant Terrence Carraway died at the scene. This is what God put him to do, to serve his God, his country, his community. And Florence County investigator Farrah Turner passed away just a few weeks later from her injuries. You give it all you got until there is nothing left. There was nothing left, but she had done her job. Now these two men sit behind bars awaiting trial. This is in connection with the incident. Thanks for joining us this evening. I'm Eric Weisfeld. My co-anchor Meredith Heline has a night off. Tonight, the community in Florence gathered to honor the lives of Farrah Turner and Terrence Carraway in a celebration of life. It took place at Francis Marion University's Performing Arts Center. Patrick Lloyd was there for the service. 365 days may seem like a long time to some people, but here in Florence, 300... Live, local, late breaking. WMBF News starts with breaking news. We do begin 6 o'clock with breaking news. Conway police are looking for an armed robbery suspect. Police say he's a black man with black pants, a black hoodie, and red shoes. The incident happened on Church Street about half an hour ago. No one was hurt during that robbery. Officers are canvassing around that area now. If you have any information, make sure you give Conway police a call. Our other big story for you at 6 o'clock, a wet weekend ahead. You got this first alert weather uh, alert on your phone today. This is through the first alert weather app. Good evening to you. Thanks for being with us at 6 o'clock. I'm Eric Weisfeld. And I'm Meredith Heline. Our First Alert weather team is watching the storm coming our way. We've been watching it for a while. And now, we have. We with a 100% chance of rain in this morning, right. and it was pouring oh, just about everywhere. Some dogs wouldn't go out to go to the restroom, nothing. I feel bad for the high school football games. At least one tonight. I feel bad for my dog. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody wants to go out, and everybody wants to stay home. You're going to feel that way tomorrow because it turns windy, it turns cold, and the rain will continue with us. Notice a pretty strong storm system heading our way. We've been talking about it for the last couple right. of days. It's going to be with us tomorrow. Wind gusts upwards of 40 miles per hour here along the Grand Strand, and we'll start to see the showers moving back in as we head through the overnight hours. A couple showers around right now and more showers as we make our way into Saturday. You'll notice the radar right now not as steady as it's been today. This just into the newsroom, the Darlington County Sheriff's Office says guns and drugs are off the streets this afternoon. A man is behind bars. Deputies say Jeffrey Lloyd of Darlington was found with methamphetamine, marijuana, several guns, counterfeit money, and several drug-related items in a house along Candleberry Drive Wednesday. Lloyd now faces a number of gun and drug charges. In addition, he was wanted in Chesterfield County for three counts of burglary. He's also charged for violating his probation. Now he's in the W. Glenn Campbell Detention Center. Controversy in Wake Forest, North Carolina, prompted the cancellation of its annual parade. This comes after concerns of planned protests over a Confederacy float that was part of the event for decades. Bridget Chapman reports. It's just not right. It's not right. And that's what we're constantly trying to refine, is make sure that the plan is forward-looking. Leaders in Horry County are looking to the future, and it's Imagine 2040 plan. Coming up, I'll share how leaders are planning to manage their rapid growth. Plus, voting in the 2020 general election could become chaotic for residents in this area of the PD. Arnie Watson breaks down the number of potential issues plaguing voters looking to make their voices heard. And a chilly start once again to tomorrow morning, but temperatures on the way up. Your news at 6 starts right now. Live, local, late breaking. This is WNBF News at 6.
Thanks for being here at 6 o'clock. I'm Meredith Heline. We're glad you're with us. I'm Eric Weisfeld. We have all of your top stories just ahead. First, though, your first alert to a cold start to the day. The news isn't all entirely frost. Stay tuned. Meteorologist Jamie Arnold explains in your first alert forecast, despite all that blue, though. <laughs> yeah, we do have to get through another chilly night, another rather chilly start to the day. Breaking news just into our newsroom. The body of that missing kayaker who disappeared last week has now been found. The South Carolina Department of Natural Resources says it's found the body of Wade Barnes and they found it not far from Peachtree Landing. That's where he went missing. And the Horry County coroner said it was ruled an accidental drowning. Also just into the newsroom, we have video from the scene of that armed robbery in Conway. Conway police are right now searching for a man who they say robbed the Carolina payday loans along the 600 block of Church Street. Yeah, they say the man was wearing black pants, a black hoodie, and red shoes. No one was hurt, but police, again, are canvassing that area. If you've seen anyone matching that description or know anything, make sure you call Conway Police. Building new neighborhoods on wetlands has become a controversial issue across Horry County. Many have spoken out, saying it puts homes in danger of flooding. But now some county leaders want to change where developers can build. WBF News reporter Casey Watson joins us now live with what this means for current and future homeowners. Good evening to you, Casey. Good evening, Eric. 37% of Horry County is wetlands, and currently developers can use this as a percentage when constructing a new neighborhood across the county. But We are taking a ride on the weather roller coaster, so buckle up. Chief Meteorologist Jamie Arnold is first alerting you to this wild weather week. Emotionally, I mean, you always you know, think of you know, what could have happened. Um, not seeing your family and friends anymore. We're hearing from a surviving officer from last year's vintage play shooting how he's being honored tonight. And they moved from Seattle to here to follow their dreams, and now what they've built could all disappear. Patrick Lloyd shares why they're not the only ones. Live, local, late breaking. This is WNBF News at 6. Semi-final Friday, win tonight, and punch your ticket to Columbia for next week's state title games. Let's get right to it, because boy, we had plenty of great games tonight. Let's start right up the street at Doug Shaw Stadium. Seahawks hosting region foe Hartsville. These two very familiar with each other. This is the fourth matchup in just two years between the Red Foxes and the Seahawks, and the Red Foxes would start off early. Obviously, no Luke Doty for the Seahawks. Oh, Owen Taylor hits Pendergrass. Hartsville up 14-0 early. Myrtle Beach has trailed in each and every playoff game this season, but Ryan Berger would settle in. He finds J.J. Jones in the corner of the end zone, and Myrtle Beach ties it at 14 all on that one. Then Xavion Knox will get involved for the Seahawks after the cheerleaders do their thing. Seahawks will go Rhino package, and it works to perfection right there. Zay Knox stumbles but finds his way into the end zone. Myrtle Beach scores 21 points unanswered. But Hartsville says, hey, we're going to respond here. Owen Taylor, you saw the quarterback. He's knocked out of this game. But Pendergrass does all he can to get into the end zone, stretches for the pylon, and ties up the game there. The Seahawks would respond, and they do it. Guess who? Xavion Knox, touchdown Seahawks. That one seals it. Myrtle Beach wins by a final score of 28-21, to winning the lower state title and clinching that second consecutive trip to Columbia. It's, it's a great team win. You know, we've been without Luke here for three or four weeks, and defense has stepped up. Our coaching staffs are uh, amazing. Uh, I'm really proud of Ryan Berger for stepping up. Just, uh, just a great team win. Um, great job handling adversity throughout the playoffs, being down in pretty much every playoff game, and coming back and, and getting a win and having a chance to go play for a state championship. Seahawks will play in Columbia on Saturday. We'll hear from them on Monday. Let's head out to Green Sea Floyd's now defending class single A champion Trojans. They're hosting Lakeview in that semifinal matchup. Big crowd on hand for the Trojans. We pick it up in the first quarter. They're already up 7-0. Quarterback Bubba Elliott takes it to the left side for a big gain. But Darian Dawkins punches the ball out. And the Wild Gators fall all over it. They get the turnover right there. It wouldn't count for much. However, because the Trojan defense is defense, excuse me, says we're having none of that. They force the three and out. Lakeview's defense steps up as well. The two, tre the two teams trade punts in the middle part of the first quarter and then the end of the first period. Jacorius Ford gets some momentum going for the Wild Gators with a big run there, shaking off defenders left and right. You can tell he's fired up after that big game. 
That drive ends up stalling out, however. A.J. Campbell comes up with a big sack on third down. You're going to see him come around. That's the reason why he's playing in the Shrine game for the Trojans. Sack there later in the second quarter. 7-6 still to score. Elliott busts loose for a big run. Hiding behind some defenders there. Green Sea, Green sea is moving. That would set up this touchdown pass to Jaquan Dixon. He's been the Mr. Do-It-All for the Trojans. But they lead 15-6 after that one. Wild Gators not going into the locker room without a fight. However, Jacorius Ford, Mr. Do-It-All for the Wild Gators, rips off another big run. This one down the right-hand sideline. They are on the one-yard line after that one. But the Trojans stop them on the goal line. Look at this one. Derek Bethay, quarterback sneak, was not successful. 15-6, the halftime lead. Green Sea Floyds would go on to win this one by a final score of 29-18. The Trojans will defend their class single-A title next Friday in Columbia. Let's move on. Carolina Forest trying to slay the dragon that is Dutch Fork. They're riding that 38-game winning streak that we talked about leading up to this one. These are two powerhouses in Class 5A. Early on, it's the Mason Garcia show. The ECU commit drives the Panthers right down the field and finishes that drive off. The keeper goes for six. Panthers up 7-0. Dutch Fork would respond as they do all year. Jonathan Hall plunges in from a few yards out. That's tied up at 7-0, but the first half is a shootout. Mason Garcia scrambles and slings it to Josh Murphy. 14-7 the score after that one. Dutch Fork is going to respond once again. Jalen Hyatt catches this one deep down the field. Dutch Fork going to be in striking range after that pretty ball. Oh my goodness, what a catch there. They give it to Hall and he does the rest right after halftime. It's Hall again. Three touchdowns in the first half for Dutch Fork. They go on and win this one 45 to 20. They're going to their fourth straight state title game, folks. Dutch Fork is a well-oiled machine. They win their 39th straight game. Nothing to be ashamed of for Mason Garcia and the Panthers. They battled and led a few times in the first half but couldn't finish the deal. They fall and finish their season at 11 and 2. We talked about three teams punching their ticket. This is the last one right here, headed down to May River. Dillon looking to punch their ticket. The Wildcats, no stranger to the lower state championship games. They've been in the lower state championship game every year since 2012. And Ahmad Green's going to get the action started here. Looks like he's going to try and find his defender. The Sharks looking, looking, looking. Wildcats intercepted, and this one's going to the Parkman's parlay. Oh, my goodness, 7 nothing. The score for Dillon after that one. The Sharks would respond, however. Green would get a touchdown run. 7-7 is going to be the score halfway through the first quarter. Dylan's going to answer that one. Finding Nemo. Nemo Squire goes right up the middle. He's going to make it 14-7 Wildcats. They've responded all year long, and they've been under the radar after that loss to Ainer. Second play of the second quarter is going to be a bad snap for the Sharks. That's that Nemo Squire touchdown we talked about, but let's go to that bad snap from the Shark. He's finally pulled down within the 10-yard line. Wildcats are going to cash in on that one. And they led big. May River would make a late, a, a late push, but couldn't finish the deal. Dylan back in the state title game for a second consecutive year, hoping for a different result this year. They took a winding road to get there, but they are back. Jackie Hayes' squad makes it. Final score in that one, 35 to 28. Dylan first forced three first half turnovers to win this one and May River. So like I said, out of the six teams, that pushed ahead. We have three, and it's the same ones from last year. If you followed last year, Myrtle Beach is back, even though they didn't have any Luke Doty. Uh, Green Sea Floyds is back behind their head coach, Donnie Keeper, who won his 250 victory earlier this postseason. And then, like we just showed you, the Dillon Wildcats and head coach Jackie Hayes in his 28th year at Dillon pushes them into the state title game. we got plenty, plenty, plenty more coverage on Twitter. We'll see you on there.